Now to the newspapers. Daily Graphic starts and says that Dawa Industrial City is born, power substation to host plants tanks, and approve $5.2 billion energy debt by NDC, Minority Challenges Government. And uh, uh, the big one here is the AFCON kickoff later today. The Guardian Times, World Health Organization warns Ghana's air pollution dangerous calls for action to improve air quality. And House extends invitation to political science department over MP's assessment. That's uh, the Ghanaian Times this morning. The find that says 89 billion tax revenue possible if government rationalizes the many tax exemptions. That's Professor Bokbin uh, talking. The Daily Guide has for some powerful grilled on Kumasi kidnappings and fires. Ghana most peaceful in West Africa. And the IGP has named new commanders for uh, the new regions. Don't forget uh, six of them. My guests who do the talking this morning, the Ashanti uh, Regional Communications Director of the NDC, Abbas Nuruddin, is here with me. Good morning. Good morning. Hope you're doing great. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us. And a Deputy Communications Director of the NPP, uh, Richard Yama, is also here. Good morning, too. Good morning, Hope you're doing great. I'm good. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Uh, <coughs> now, let's start a conversation this way and take a look at uh, the story in the... Um, Daily graphic this morning. Uh, the uh, tariff adjustment, uh, a huge one. I guess that will attract a lot of debate over the weekend. As we're told, 1st July is the announcement. And after six months of delay, the PURC will today announce new tariffs for uh, water and electricity. Uh, we're told July 1 is the day it will take effect. Uh, two highly placed sources involved in the negotiation and setting of the tariffs told the Daily Graphic that while electricity tariffs would go up between 10 and 12 percent, those of water will be increased by less than 10 percent. The increase will be across the board for both residential and commercial consumers throughout the country. Uh, according to one of the sources who was not authorized to speak on the matter, it will be less than 12 percent of, for both electricity and water. Now, while admitting that the announcement of new tariffs had delayed by about six months, the source said the tariffs that would be announced today would not take retros retrospective effect, but come into operations on July 1. Now, these are the reasons. Now, the source explained that, but for the renegotiation of gas prices, which reduce the cost of gas used to generate power, and the relocation of the car partnership from Tema in Greater Accra to uh, Atuabo in the western region, the tariff increment for electricity would have been higher than planned. And uh, so we are told that while power car, sh car power ship is going to Atuabo, it will cut the fuel intake by almost 50%, and that is why they're able to make uh, these savings and bring the tariffs down. So that's the story so far. Let's start the conversation. Richard, now, first of all, do we need to increase tariffs? Water electricity. Good morning to your viewers. <coughs> and thank you for the opportunity. Mm. Uh, to take uh, viewers back, when the MPP government took office in 2017, yeah, um, according to our electoral pledge, we reduced uh, tariffs uh, averaging some 30 percent because by then the burden on the ordinary Kenyan on the economy and on doing business in particular was huge because we had most of the companies mm. complaining that uh, especially the production industrial companies that electricity tariffs were consuming most of their, um, their, their, their income. And so it was more expensive to do business in Ghana, and most of them were relocating. And so this reprieve was given, and it helped a lot in retaining most of, of these companies and attracting mm -hmm. others. Now, uh, after that, the government took um, a holistic uh, look at the energy sector. So as you and I are speaking, there's uh, 
uh, a document, a cabinet uh, a, a document called the Energy Recovery uh, Program that has taken a holistic look at the whole energy sector and its impact and how the issues could be resolved. And government has gone into some negotiations with development partners <coughs> on this call. And they are looking at how to permanently resolve this whole issue of doing so that tomorrow, tomorrow, next, it doesn't happen. We shouldn't get to a situation where we are having, uh, what do we call it, uh, uh, an energy crisis where we have 12 hours on, 12 hours off. And so certain recommendations were made. Uh, amongst them was the fact that if you look at the, the, the uh, independent power producers that mm -hmm. we brought on board, during the uh, period where the doom so was happening, it was an emergency situation and it looked like we hurriedly went into a lot of negotiations with uh, some companies to help resolve the problem. And in our, in, a, in our hurry, we didn't actually get critical because <laughs> you needed a resolution. So if you look at the tariff regime, okay, uh, on average, it's between 15 and 19 uh, 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 cents. Uh, 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 per kilowatt hour. Per, yes. You mean the, yes. the, the agreement with these IPPs? Yes, okay. yes, yes. So it's, it's, it's been on the high side. It made us very unproductive, unattractive in the sub-region. At the point, we had the highest tariff regime in the sub-region. Okay. And yet, if you take us a few years back, and we were uh, uh, net suppliers of uh, uh, energy to the sub-region. Mm -hmm. And so there's the need for that aspect uh, to be looked at. Now, uh, the second aspect of it is that we have excess ca uh, capacity. As a result of we getting into these negotiations, we had an emergency to situation. We had a lot of uh, emergency batches being brought in. Mm. And then at the end of the day, we had more than we required. But in signing the agreement, we didn't say we will sign it and pay us and when we take the energy. It was <laughs> once they, they were producing... Uh, whether we use it or not, we're to pay. So as we speak at the peak, at our peak, our demand is 2,600 uh, 2, megawatts. We have in excess of 4,600 megawatts. There's an excess of 2,000 that we are paying that we don't need. Now, if you look at this PDS arrangement that has come in, we have gotten to a situation where we have freed up uh, ECG, mm. And ECG has now been given an export license and is to uh, draw lines into the sub-region and sell the excess. Oh. Now, what is happening is this. For us to be able to sell and be competitive within the sub-region, we will have to look at the tariff regime. So government has had to go into negotiations with these uh, uh, IPPs to reduce the tariffs. I can tell you, the car power that the NDC signed for 2.9 billion, okay, 2.9 billion over the uh, 10 month uh, year period. We on that alone have saved some 500 million dollars in renegotiation. The renegotiations. renegotiations. If you add fuel costs, if you add fuel costs to the renegotiation we would be saving some 1.6 billion US dollars at the end of it. But the contract has to also be renegotiated to benefit uh, the, 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 the company in one way or the other. But this is a reality. You take uh, ACA, we are saving some two, uh, 240 million dollars after the renegotiations. Mm. Okay. But there are issues, capacity charges. We are paying for, like I told you, excess capacity. We have brought on ENI. Okay, they are giving us gas, and we have shot a bill of forty million dollars a month that we are not using. One hundred and sixty-eight million dollars in a year. We are not using it now. We are having to recalibrate all these machines to have. 
that brought on board. So what happens is that at the end, the tariffs maybe from 15 and 19 will be halved. Will come to an average of about 10, at most 12 uh, 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 cents, cents per, kilowatt per kilowatt hour. But for this to all be achieved, okay, the recalibration and the uh, 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 gas aspects, they require some uh, financial re-engineering for it to go on. As you and I speak, last year, 2018, the Ministry of Finance had to pump in some $500 million into the energy subsector just to help uh, absorb the negative impact of it on the economy. And so uh, government is saying that, okay, looking at the impact going forward, let's um, get tariffs to absorb that. Then these monies can go into other uh, aspects of the economy. In the long, long run, when ECG starts offloading these 2,000 megawatts into the sub region, you are going to have uh, money coming in instead. So give it another two, three years, there's going to be reverse flow. We could have the tariffs go down. The tariffs That's could what go down. Mean. Yes. But uh, I've heard, and it looks like the graphic reportage is quite on the uh, uh, accurate side. Uh, the estimates out there were 30, 31. 40 uh, 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 percent. No, uh, the graphic says 10 and 12, between 10 and 12. Yes, it's within, it's within that uh, uh, frame. And uh, let's wait. I'm sure PRC will, uh, the within, within, within the day. Let, let, let me uh, ask you this before I go to uh, Abbas. If, if anyone asks you, you talk about excess capacity, power that we have produced that we, we cannot use. How do you explain that to someone who says that my community has no electricity yeah because it costs so much to transfer it to the person so in in, in you, actual you, fact you it is not access. it is not excess but no, we, we cannot excess. take the power there look in the first place what is the coverage of ghana ghana has the highest coverage when it comes to uh, a, a, a electricity per population mm. okay let's knock it ourselves but the point is that it is not every nook and cranny you will go to a village and there are only two people if you are going to say you carry electricity to that uh, 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 two people that form a village, mm. what is going to be the cost per uh, 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 person? You understand that? So, but when they pay this, bills, they, they will would pay, pay bills. Oh yes, they will pay bills. So the, the, the capital investment can be repaid through the bills that they will pay. How much do if you go to my village? How much do, do, do they have to pay for it? Are they are they uh, 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 and they do we have? You know, there's some discrimination in the payment of the bills. Mm. We have the lo those in the very low income level, and when they announce it, you see that the 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 tariffs are graduated. Those in the lower level pay very very minimal increase, if at all. Then it goes up and up and up and up. To a large extent, those of us in the upper level subsidized for those in the upper level, uh, lower level. Mm -hmm. But those up there are few. So at the end of the day, the cost to you, the one up there, is higher than those at the bottom. So we would have to graduate. When we started in, 19, uh, 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 in the 1960s, uh, when we put up the, the dump, we didn't send it everywhere. Gradually, it has spread. There will come a time the whole country will be covered. But that is when your money is able to do that irrespective of the person's income. And that is why I'm saying that when you have ECG able to uh, sell this to sell excess, the excess power. Yes. Then they can use the income there to do expansion, to bring in more. And then uh, it wouldn't cost that much to uh, okay. uh, 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 cover the 20% that is left. Grateful. I'll come back to you. Abbas. Is this explanation, or first of all, the increment? You are for it or you're against it? The, your, your party, the NDC. Thank you very much, Bright. Let me say a warm good morning to your good self, my brother and viewers. I think uh, the position of the NDC was well articulated yesterday by the minority mm. in Parliament that this increment is unwarranted and it's unreflective of the realities on the ground. Right, you know, basically there are two elements that influence the computation of uh, electricity price and basically 
in our situation is the cost of fuel the cost of fuel which is relatively uh, quite expensive as compared to even natural gas but thankfully for almost a year now we uh, for almost six months now we have experienced relative uh, stability on the uh, fuel price market the international so market. even so even re with regards to uh, uh, fuel there is no reason for an in increment now we are being told that most of our uh, uh, plants are going to run on gas, which is four or five times cheaper than, uh, than uh, 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 fuel. So there is no need for an increment. And it's more or less exposes the populism in the 15% redu reduction by government last year. We told government that there was no basis for that. And considering the fact that uh, because we went into doom, so some contingency actions were taken to bring in car power, and there is some debt to be settled. So that 15% reduction was absolutely, absolutely needless. Now we have we, uh, the minority and the NDC stand vindicated that that 15% reduction was clearly unwarranted. You pose a question to uh, my very good friend Richard, and uh, I. I his answer was, was, for me, was quite unsatisfactory. As we speak, there are about 20,000 communities in Ghana that are not hooked to the national grid. So if you have uh, uh, 2,000 SS capacity, what do you do? You bring them on board. Again, Ghana is signatory to certain uh, uh, sub-regional protocols. That makes it uh, uh, possible for us to supply excess energy into the West African power pool where revenues could be rigged in. What is preventing government from doing that? Our problem, right, largely as a country, is because of the huge generational and operational losses that we usually encounter. As we speak, I'm told the generational and transmission losses stands at about 20% of total energy generated at the end of the we day produce and lose 20 percent yes of the, uh, uh, in the course of transmitting we lose 20 percent of the energy generated largely because of 40 transmission lines and and and, and what have you and the power generators uh, seem to uh, spread this 20 percent generational losses to uh, the ultimate consumer this has accounted for uh, the increase in petroleum uh, prices. So as a government, what you need to do is to bring in innovative ways, uh, look at ways to minimize these generation losses so that uh, the prices of energy would, 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 would go down. Another issue that I would want to talk about is how government is mismanaging ESLA. Right, you know ESLA is supposed to, that is the energy sector levy, is supposed to bring in about three billion annually. That's amount, that money is quite substantial to settle the energy sector debt. But government is diverting those monies for other purposes. Last year, we were, just this year, in January, we were told 60% of ESLA is being divert, diverted to pay uh, pension funds. When you mismanage uh, uh, energy sector revenue in that regard, clearly you will find yourself in the challenge that we, we are facing today. But NDC as a political party, as a social democratic party that we are, we are against any government intervention that will increase the economic hardship, that will aggravate the already bad situation in the system, right? Let's look at the impact of this energy, uh, the increase in tariffs on industry. Most of the businesses in this country are collapsing because of the unfavorable uh, economic environment. The depreciation CD seem to have increased the cost of raw materials, and the cost of production seem to have gone up. When cost of production goes up, the producers will pass it on to ultimate consumers, and this could probably lead to inflation. And when there is inflation, clearly there is a certain erosion of the purchasing power or, or, or of the ordinary Ghanaian. And those who feel so pained that they cannot stay out of business will just retrench the little workers that they employ, go to the forest market, exchange that some dollars, put it under his bed, and aggravate the already, already bad situation. The other aspect that I want to 
look at is the effect of an increase in tariffs on the ordinary Ghanaian standard of living. Right, you know, electricity and water have more or less become basic mm. necessities, such that we can do away without. Now that government is going to seeking to increase it by 15%, it will have a domino effect on all the other sectors of the economy. It will have a domino effect on the retail industry. It will have a domino effect on, on, on food prices. It will have a domino effect on, on, on a whole lot. So we are of the view that insofar as uh, uh, the prices of petrol has not gone out and, th and that most of our thermal plants today are being powered with gas, there is no basis for that increment. And government should re-strategize. Government should think at utilizing the energy sector levy for the purpose for which it is intended. That will very much minimize some of these uh, 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 increments. That Great. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, when, the, when the government decided uh, some, uh, I think a year and a half ago, a year ago, to, to reduce the uh, tariffs, what was the reaction of the NDC then? And how do you explain that reaction in, in relation to the reaction now? We felt at the time that it was a populist move because... And you said prices should have gone up rather. No, it shouldn't. It, shouldn't, it, it, it should have stayed the way it is, considering the fact that we had accumulated so much energy sector debt in seeking to uh, resolve the debilitating uh, energy crisis that has uh, engulfed us. As, as a country and government in the short term at least should have looked at how to mobilize the re little revenue it generates to settle uh, um, 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 those debt. We are of the view that in the long term the prices of uh, electricity should come down because uh, we have a trouble on stream that is producing about 180 million standard cubic feet of gas and uh, largely because of a trouble most of our thermal plants are now running on gas which is really relatively cheaper any the any uh, uh, discovery seem to have a substantial reserve of gas as well which if also brought on board will will uh, uh, more or less bring down the cost of production of electricity mm. in ghana government should focus government should look at uh, 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 organizing the little revenue within the energy sector to bring on board those gas reserves that are sitting on tap that has been fled. Government should look at how to bring that on board so that the energy, uh, uh, the, the prices we are paying for electricity will go down. Within the West African sub-region, Richard rightly said that uh, prices of electricity in Ghana are quite higher relatively as compared to Cote d'Ivoire and the sub-region, largely because of the generational losses and largely... It, it, it's not because of the, the kind of negotiations no, that we no, had during no. the, uh, the, the uh, emergency period? Uh, I don't think so. Li it's largely because of uh, uh, gas. Most of the generational uh, plants of power in Cote d'Ivoire are being powered by gas. And you know gas is 50-60% cheaper. Thankfully, we have a substantial amount of gas. Mm. Now that ACA is coming on board, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm told there is a substantial amount of gas there as well. Let's look at how to bring all those on board so that the prices of the price of uh, electricity will go down. Further. Okay, l l let me come to Richard. Richard, he raises the social impact of this, and also says that well, we are now using gas, and so and most of our plants are using gas. So how come the the the, the prices will go up? You see, uh, when you are eating and singing at the same time, that's what happens. Mm. The hypocrisy of it shows at the end of the day. <coughs> Uh, 20,000 communities without lights. That is his claim. That is his claim. It just happened in the last two years. You've not said that. Eh? Well, he, he's not said no, that. No, no, no. That's the question. It just happened under the last two years. So MPP is supposed to solve every problem under the sun. We never claimed that. Mm. If those 20,000 communities were in Ghana, under them, and they didn't solve it, we are supposed to, all of a sudden, we've had a windfall, we should solve every problem in the, under the sun. Is that what he's claiming? He's saying that there hasn't been any increase, substantial increase in fuel. 
2015 go and see the price per barrel is uh, 52.3 uh, 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 dollars a barrel mm -hmm. today as you and i are speaking it's 63.9 almost 12 dollars this day. we pass all of them through uh, uh, parliament so even if the current government didn't want it it is legally binding on us and we'll have to live with it being a, 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 a government that cares we came and looked at it and renegotiated. Let them come and tell us that we haven't saved this uh, uh, country some 500 million US dollars on car power, 240 on Akka. Okay. Going forward. And okay. we, at the end of the day, have reduced, look, in the first place, hmm. when we came, we reduced it by 30% across board. No, okay? That is a fast line. When you do it's that... Never it uh, never reflected uh, uh, in the in the well Abbas Abbas Alahim, you okay. don't distract me. You get a chance to if react. you did that thirty percent reduction and then later on the industry players are asking for another thirty percent increment, that will bring us to what? Zero net effect. Mm. Taking the the uh, reduction and the increment. And then you go into negotiations with them and you renegotiate the agreement. That lets you have only 11% uh, 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 increment, increment, and then someone has a problem with it, it will have a domino effect, it will have that, 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 that. When you okay. did, you should have solved all those problems. I am grateful. Rich, I'm grateful. Abba, so you he says that the increment us. is, uh, he says minute, that's what he said. Well, uh, uh, minute compared to uh, what uh, the industry players right, want. I, I am really, it's one third of what I, they want. I am really scandalized by the level of insensitivity displayed by uh, Richard to the plight of the ordinary Ghanaian. By what, uh, by what standard of measure are you saying that 15% increment in petrol is minute? They are not suffering have you so I'm coming, I'm coming. The I'm effect coming. of doing so... Uh, Richard, uh, uh, Richard, uh, uh, Richard allow him. Uh, uh, Richard, please allow, allow him. The effect uh, of doing uh, so... Richard, please, please allow him. The effect of doing so on the... Richard, please allow him. Allow him. On the consumer, it's more... Devastating than an 11 percent. Uh, Richard, you, you allow him, right? They are not suffering, doom right? So. You they are not suffering allow your hours right? Doom you so. allow your reporters go out and, and speak to camp captains of industry, they are reeling under very harsh economic environment. The factors of production are going up, the city is depreciating, everything is falling apart. And as a government that is sensitive, the least you would do at this material moment is to seek to compound an or already uh, 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 bad situation. When there are other uh, options that could be uh, employed uh, to resolve uh, the situation. If the prices of petrol are going up, Ghana will gain as well because we are now a net exporter of, 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 of uh, uh, petrol. In, during, in, during the days of Mahama, we are doing like 70,000 uh, 70, barrels per day. Now we are doing about 180,000 minus ACA. If ACA comes on board, there is a possibility that we could do 500,000 barrels. of. So it means Ghana is raking in more revenue uh, in the oil sector. So why will my brother Richard conveniently only talk about the challenges and leave out the revenue government is, 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 is bringing in? And the point, that our, our main reason for objecting to this increment is because the prices of petrol have not gone out substantially. And uh, now that most of our thermal plants are running on gas, which is relatively cheaper, there is no cause for this increment. So we, the minority, will always continue to be on the side of the ordinary Ghanaian, yeah. the uh, unemployed uh, graduate who is finding jobs and is unable to find as a result of the harsh economic environment, those who have been retrained because uh, captains of industry find the business environment unfriendly. I think as a government, the Nana Kufuado administration, the MPP have had as its philosophy as a, a, a property owning Democrats who always pride themselves as always helping the private sector to stand on uh, an even footing. But now as we speak, the private sector is reeling. During the May Day celebrations, you saw the concerns that were coming up from AGI, from the Kumasi Business Association. These are the concerns that we believe government should 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 listen and, and stop this intransigence and that belligerent posture.
when uh, Ghanaians express their concern. I appreciate the difficulty of my brother uh, Richard in seeking to uh, explain away the problem. But we as Ghanaians see through the, the, the smoke screen that government is using. Brian, okay, Brian, grateful. Brian. Uh, Richard, I have Brian, moved on. Brian, no, just, no, just, just, no, Richard, just, I have just, moved just, on. Little, uh, daily graphic on page 17 says majority Brian, minority uh, lock horns. No, Richard, I have moved I on. I won't come back to the, No, no, no. The uh, development uh, indices will, uh, we, that have come. Yes, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll look at it. Yes. But daily graphic on page 17 says it will resolve his majority minority lock horns on true state of debt. And the House yesterday received uh, the report of the Finance Committee on the Annual Public Debt uh, for 2018. Uh, we're told that while majority MPs argued that the, the NPP government had reduced the state or the rate of borrowing and used the borrowed money for important projects, the minority members accused the government of ballooning the national debt and expanding the borrowed sums on consumption rather than on capital expenditure. Uh, that's, that, that, that's the story. This issue of, Richard, this issue of borrowing and public debt. Can we ever get to a point where we will know that as a country, we cannot, but we need to borrow in order to bring development? Can we ever get there? Uh, but is it lost on anyone that we will never borrow? Well, the, the, the minority's claim is that the NPP in the build up to 2016 said that borrowing uh, isn't good. The it's a lazy the man's approach is, is, to bring in development. Yeah, you see, it's like a, 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 a kid going to school, going to write an exam, setting up his own question and answering it. It's gotten to the point where they actually had to act, uh, manufacture a Twitter account for the vice president and put out uh, a tweet in his name, <laughs> which has since been re re uh, 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 recanted. You see, that is the desperation in the NDC's approach. Mm. But at least uh, I'm happy. They are doing well. We're hearing more uh, uh, about them in opposition. They are doing very good at that. And uh, I pray they stay there and learn some good lessons on how to really uh, 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 run a government. And when they get the opportunity next time, they will do a good job of it because it was a mess. Now, if you took uh, a, an economy and the debt mm. stock was $8 billion, mm? and by the time you leave, it counts $122 billion. How many percentage uh, uh, points is that? Mm? If this... 100% of so this So the 8 is billion is from where? It's from which, what time to what time? Yes. When they took over in 29, uh, 2009. Okay. When the they left... That was 8 billion. Yes. And okay. when they were leaving, they left it at 120. So this is over a thousand percent increase. So what are they crying about? Now, I take it over at 122. Mm. Yes. And I'm in uh, my third year. And you're saying I've added what eighty billion it's, to it. It's now one seventy-three. Uh, the report that was okay, one seventy-three. So I've added how much? Fifty billion to it. How? What is the percentage of fifty uh, out of one hundred twenty-two? Is it even thirty percent? So what? What is the argument about? What is the NDC complaining? One eight billion. You took it one hundred twenty-two. I'm at one hundred seventy-three. You are complaining. And you are going to form a Twitter account and say that I said I won't borrow. When you are called to proof, you say, oh, uh, you thought it is that. Uh, what don't we know about fake social media accounts? So the vice president never said anything like that? He never said anything like that. He okay. said that, look, the rate at which you are borrowing and using the funds, account for it. What is the impact? What, 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 what is there to show? So he never He's said we should not borrow. He, he and never that we said, have the resources no, he, he never didn't said, say that. He said we have the resources here, we can uh, 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 build uh, uh, from here. And we are raising resources. You've heard Professor Walkman uh, uh, talking about 
uh, 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 we've been able to hit the eight, 82 uh, uh, or 84 billion, yeah, uh, uh, 89 billion, uh, 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 89 billion uh, 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 revenue uh, uh, targets. And that is what we have in, the, in mind. Where do you think he had that figure from? Because there's a target in mind to hit. We are raising, look, the world is changing. Hmm. We do not expect that we will keep going to the IMF and World Bank. And mind you, in our history, the NDC has had the knack for taking us to the N, uh, uh, IMF and World Bank all the time. The NPP, on the other hand, has had the knack of bringing us out of that place to be self-reliant, okay? And the figures are there to show. Today, that's why I was asking you if we will go into the, the, the uh, um, um, uh, growth uh, uh, factors. He was talking about industry, industry players making, uh, saying A, B, C, D. Under you, industry was growing at negative 17%. Today, they are all coming up. 3%, 4%, 5%. You go a Greek. For the first time, a Greek is being shot up by livestock production. Livestock production. The increment in the agricultural growth in this country this year, last year was food production. This year was uh, uh, livestock uh, 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 production. So the economy is obviously growing in every sector. They were pooping with 1D, uh, uh, 1F uh, uh, um, program. Now, even their own backyard, they are calling for 1D, 1F. They want the projects. We should bring some to them. Every community in this country now is clamoring for a, a village industry. If it wasn't good, why would they be calling for it? Because it is changing lives. They've made all sorts of noise about one village, one dark. Okay, right and yet, when you, go, go when you go to their communities, I had an opportunity to be on a program with an NDC MP. And he pooped one village, one dam. When I, uh, he finished and I mentioned the 21 uh, uh, dams that we had sunk in his constituency, he was like, Okay. These are the difficulties. They speak uh, 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 with one side of the right, mouth and then eat okay. from the All other right. side. I'm grateful. Abbas, so, so that's the situation. The issue of the debt, he said, well, we need to borrow. But the issue is that perhaps you accumulated more debt than the, the NPP has done. Thank, Thank you me. very much, Bright. Let me deal with the substantive issues before I come to the tangential that he brought in at the tail end of his submission. You see, Bright, what is happening now uh, kind of exposes the naked hypocrisy of the MPP as a political party. In opposition, they made us believe that a government borrowing to develop a nation is a lazy man's approach. Baumia said it on countless occasions during the series of lectures he organized at the Central University. Nanado himself alluded to that. And there was a time that even Esla Wusu, the current Minister of Communication, said that if uh, all, all government is about is borrowing to embark on develop, development, then the, her 18-year-old son can govern better. Conveniently, uh, uh, my brother Richard is now uh, suffering from selective am amnesia. He seemed to have forgotten about all of that. But in principle, we in the NDC said that borrowing was not a problem. But what you use the monies you borrow for is the issue at stake here. And right before I go, let me uh, uh, smooth in some factual distortions he sought to throw out to, uh, uh, to the public. Uh, when the NDC came to power, we inherited a national debt of $9.5 billion. That's not 2009. Yes, billion dollars. At the time, <laughs> and at the time we were living office, the national debt stock was hovering around uh, 29, 30 billion. So that's attempt by the MPP to kind of... That's it, dollars. Yes. This figure when, you are using, if what you want, is it? If you oh, want, no, 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 I'm right. coming. Okay. The figure please, you are using, please, what are we please. using? The figure you are using. Please, please. The so, you see, daily so, graphic is in dollars. I'm coming. No, I'm coming. It's, it's, see, it's 100 and... Yeah, so, so why is he... Why is he... Why is he... If you allow me, please. Why is he... Conveniently, conveniently, they quote this in dollars and do as in the Ghana city, which gives a rather bloated image that ours 
was quite inflated. But that is not even the issue. Hold the on, issue. hold on. No, Richard, no, 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 no. The plan is to you he's, to, he's, to he's, he's no. peddling for us. No, Richard, and I'll, I'll, I'll come to you. These figures I gave you are in cities. Richard, I'll come to you to react. So allow him to go on. So please, don't, please allow him. Abbas, please go on. Please correct yourself. Please. At no point in time, sir. Don't revisit your notes. Please correct yourself. Richard, I said eight billion to one hundred billion. Please allow you to come to you to Okay, Abbas, please go. Please but revisit your figures. I, At no point did I use dollars. Richard, I am telling you that what that the national debt we inherited in two thousand and nine was nine point five billion dollars, not in CDs as you are quoting. And what is this us? You can check from the Bank of Ghana. What is your source? Have you provided any source either? You also, it's a deliberate attempt to mm. uh, kind of uh, sway me off uh, 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 the path. But the point I'm making is that borrowing in on of itself is not a, pro a problem. But what you borrow for is the real cause for and concern. What have you used the and uh, for? John Mahama, in the four years that he was president, added about 40 billion, the four years, 40 billion to our national debt stock. Nanadu Danko Kufuado in less than three years. Dollars or no, 40 billion Ghana cities. So, okay. 40 billion in the four years of John Dramani Mahama. And Nanadu Danko Kufuado in less than three years has added close to 80 billion. There are uh, some of those that, excluding the Sino Hydro deal and the bond that government is yet to raise. And we are not seeing nothing in terms of infrastructural development. Mahama borrowed to embark on capital projects mm. but nanado is spending to, on consumption to, to so if you dubai. look around even in accra you can see the circle interchange du dubai. you can the see that and kills people, please, yeah. please. you know. can see the kaswa interchange you mm. can see the rage hospital you can see the bank of ghana hospital you can see the 120 bed dodua hospital the teshi water desalination mm. project the pung water expansion project the uh, tuabo uh, gas processing factory the uh, um, I, I have you've mentioned run, run I have me the, 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 <laughs> tema, the tema and the Takrade expansion project. And the difference between the NDC and the MPP is that we borrowed to spend on self-financing projects. The two Abu gas processing factory that we established, we, that cost the nation to the tune of about $1 billion, is now paying the debt that was procured for its establishment. The Takrade and the Tema expansion, the revenues are increasing. So there is a huge possibility that we are going to rake in more revenue to defray the debt that was procured in its establishment. Unfortunately, this government is borrowing to spend on consumption. Just in 2017, 1.5 billion Ghana cities was allocated to the Office of Government Machinery. Most of these monies that are borrowed is being spent on the over-bloated elephantine uh, uh, Kufuadu administration, the 123 uh, ministers. So at the end of the day, we have nothing to show for it. And our argument has been that it, it, it's more or less an attempt to overburden generations yet unborn. Because 20, 30 years down the line, our children that are coming up would have to pay this that that government is borrowing so there should be something to show for it but as we speak i'm challenging i am challenging uh, uh, my brother richard to mention one substantive project that uh, government has embarked on ever since they came to power and um, right don't forget this is a, against the backdrop that this is one particular government that has raked in more revenue than any other government revenue alone with, for the past three years stands at 120 billion 120 billion in terms of revenue, in terms of taxes, about 12 billion. And government has borrowed close to 80 billion on top of it, and there is nothing to show. He was talking about one. Uh, no, right, I'm coming, why please. You are you uh, are uh, 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 talking. Uh, 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 you, I'm coming. I'm coming. When your own figures I'm coming, says the thing I'm is coming, at 70, I'm coming, 73, they left it. I'm coming. They are the ones who even came to the minority. If you listen to the minority, and if you listen to the uh, minority, and if it's 73, why is he saying 80 billion? And you're letting him have it. Richard, what you should know is that there are some particular periods for which certain debts have been 
accumulated, right. which are not be added to the national stock. But the minority, oh, so you in are adding the in minority, future. the minority in parliament yeah, have adding the benefit in of this information. Spend. Okay, okay. So this, is, this is twenty. He's, he's and he's what this is twenty eighteen. Mm -hmm. The one seventy three is, is, yes. is twenty eighteen. Uh -huh. And we are yeah. almost half through twenty eighteen. And we have finished twenty eighteen. And, and the government has issued bonds. So you are adding it. Why will you not allow me, my brother? Yeah, Richard, you just I don't. I don't get it. Can we speak to what is in the paper that you were talking about? You were talking about. You were talking about one district. You you please allow. 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 Please uh, you were asked to talk about oh. borrowing, but you were here talking about one district, one factory, one village, one dam, which has become a monumental failure. Mm. And this position is not being articulated by the NDC, by the opinion leaders and, 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 and chiefs abdom. Right. What is the rationale for uh, this whole idea of one village, one dam? It's to ensure all year uh, round farming so that during the dry season there would be water available for uh, 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 all year round farming. Now government goes to dig a well, puts water in it, and come to uh, portray to the whole world as having dug a dam. That is not what you promised. And the amount of money being uh, uh, pumped in there raises even value for money uh, 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 issues. One district, one factory. Did I hear you talk about one district, one factory? There is nothing to show for that. If you go to Kumasi, well, that, 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 that is a bare-faced lie. You know what the MPP is doing? They are now taking private, uh, privately established company and repackaging it as part of one of the one district, one factory. If you go to Kumase, right, do you know one of the factories they have penciled as one of their one district, one factory initiative? The Daku Farms. Daku Farms. Can the MPP claim Daku Farms to be a, 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 a factory that was established under their watch? Okay. Yeah, Ghanaians can see through this smooth screen, and I think we need to. Right. The man says I shouldn't talk about one village, one dam. Shouldn't talk about one DYF. He ends up talking about it. You talked about it, and I had to respond to it. It's obvious you don't even know what you're talking about. But is he in all the all all the? Can you actually tell us the? net effect of the uh, this engineered uh, 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 overpass at circle the number of people who have died <laughs> okay. as a result okay. of that why are you know, I, I, I have right. and, uh, this morning. I, I, I am grateful if you I if you took right, 34 right, 89 you billion you me dollars the top of the and you spent right, 4 you billion of it right, if building if infrastructure where is the rest of the 30 gentlemen billion? i'm grateful but, but if you allow me, I'm asking you, Dean, is the Ashanti Regional Communication Director of the NDC, uh, Richard Ingham, is a Deputy Communication Director of the NPP. Gentlemen, I'm grateful for your Friday morning. Thank you. Uh, stay here.